Part of that gets us there first or 21st remains to be seen. What was it like uh, picking up the anchor? <laughs> I think that was probably one of the most challenging uh, parts of this race so far. It was uh, pretty much white out. There was uh, a foot or better of snow. You know, uh, you still see results of, uh, of that drive with the, with the snow that's packed in the rims of the truck, you know. Uh, it was pretty slow going. I felt, uh, I felt many times that it was more uh, dangerous than anything that I've ever faced on the back of a sled. Um, so, I've said many times, and I'll say it again, the hardest part of racing is getting to the starting line. It, this is the easy part, you know. All we got to do is go out and, and enjoy and take care of 16 dogs. Everything else gets left at home. The broke down trucks, the house payment thing get paid, the whatever is not, you know. All that stuff does not pertain to me in the next eight, nine, ten days. Yeah. So, you know, on that note, you got to have a, a, a crew of competent people that you can trust and, and know that when you leave, you don't have to worry about those things. It's going to get taken care of or it'll be there when I get home. <laughs> you know, so, uh, I said, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, it's going to be an eight or nine day event. And, and the hardest part is the ninth or tenth day when you got to go back to reality. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't mind seeing a two or three thousand mile race personally. <laughs> so you're going to be relieved when you get out there on the trail? Absolutely. All the, all the little things that run through your mind. I hope I got this. I hope I got that. I hope the generator's got plenty of fuel. I hope that, you know, all that, like I said, gone. You know, now I got 16 dogs to focus on, and uh, and uh, that's my main concern. So. Uh, and Aaron was uh, mentioning earlier that you uh, you have some new technology, or you're using some new technology on the race along the way to help you. Can you yeah, I, I, you know, there's no secret I got some health issues, and the main one at the moment is uh, circulation problems. As we stand here, I mean, I see people with no gloves. I got two hand warmers in my gloves and my toes are cold. I have, um, I have a uh, generator, 10 pound generator and three solar panels to help keep all of my batteries charged as we go. I don't have to go to a checkpoint and worry about finding a plug in to recharge my batteries to keep my hands warm. I'm doing that on my sled regardless of where I'm at. So um, it's just another piece of machinery to keep me in the sport as long as possible. You know, you look around, there's people, I don't even know what people are dragging around, but, you know, I'm no uh, different. I got a contraption as well, and it's fully loaded with all the things I need to stay warm and have a good time. Very cool. Aaron, did you have any other questions? Um, it's a significant investment every year. What, what does it cost you this year? Ridiculous amount. I, uh, my kettle goes through about 250 grand a year just to maintain 70 dogs, three people, and all the equipment it takes to do that. You know, I don't have to have 70 dogs for myself, but it's not just me. Like I said before, we got a team of people that help this kennel, and their reward and their pay is to be able to run the dogs that they work to, to take care of. So instead of paying them a salary every month, I give them a place to live, I provide them with a dog team to run and train, which has ultimately benefited me, because I can't train all the youngsters. And we always have young dogs coming up, so I have two great helpers that that are, um, well, I think they got some dog in them, you know, so it's really nice to, to have people like that that I can count on. Uh, <clears throat> so, it's an expensive sport. Nine out of 10 people here are probably in debt, you know, and, and we do it knowing that there's maybe no real payoff. There are a lot of people leaving this uh, parking lot today that are gonna make $1,000 when they get to the finish line. They invested fifty to hundred thousand dollars this year. Their houses in mortgage, their trucks fixing to get repoed, you know, and their credit cards are maxed out. It's not for the money, obviously. We love what we do. Unfortunately, there's not much money in it, and I think it's kind of odd, you know. But um, if they had a case of beer to raise for, I'm sure there'd still be 78 people out here, you know. We love what we do. You, 